The quantum internet is coming. Not tomorrow and not for everyone, but it's starting to work. For the first time, researchers have used ordinary fiber optic cables to send quantum messages across more than 250 kilometers. What could we do with that? Let's have a look. The recent demonstration was for quantum key distribution. As the name suggests, this is the method of sharing secret keys that can be used to encrypt other data. It's a security protocol, basically, and an ultra-secure one in that. Because if you use quantum particles, then it isn't possible to intercept the message without destroying it. And if you're fine with destroying it, you'll not get much information out of it either. The demonstration demonstration took place in Germany between Frankfurt and Kehl with a relay station in Karlsruhe. It basically went by underneath my feet. They managed a quantum bit rate of 100 per second, about as much as the Wi-Fi on the German railway, but enough to share the encryption keys. Quantum keys have been shared before and across longer distances than that, but what makes this experiment notable is that it's been done with almost normal infrastructure. I say almost normal because they didn't exactly use phone cables. Instead, they used a European research network called Geant that's for research purposes and among other things connects computer clusters at high bandwidth. Still, the point is that this is all done with standard commercial fiber optic cables at room temperature and shows that the technology can work outside the laboratory. You may wonder whether this can ever work in a standard telecom fiber with normal non-quantum signals also running through? The answer is yes. We know this because just a few weeks ago, the Japanese company Toshiba announced a different breakthrough. They combined a quantum key distribution with a standard non-quantum data stream in a single fiber, and they demonstrated that this works too. So it seems that while the bitrate for quantum keys is still very low, owing to their susceptibility to noise, we can in principle send them along the already existing fiber fiber optics cables, which, by the way, still have not reached my office. The technology is already attracting commercial interest. The bank ASBC operates a quantum secure link in the UK that could serve the purpose of protecting large foreign exchange trades, which they have shown to work in a demonstration project. In Switzerland, the telecom company Swisscom trialed quantum keys to secure data between university and supercomputing centers. And South Korea Korea's telecom company is actually offering a subscription service that lets enterprises share quantum keys for a monthly fee. This all sounds very interesting, and doing anything with quantum is currently very timely. But these are all small test projects. In the long run, the question is whether it will be worth the effort and money. What sort of data really needs protection by quantum keys? They're ultra secure, all right, but for the vast majority of purposes, this security is an overkill. While some of the currently used security protocols on the internet can be cracked with large enough quantum computers, which we don't have and might never have, there are security protocols which cannot be cracked by quantum computers and that do not require quantum keys. They just use more complicated encryption protocols. Indeed, the world is already switching to this so-called called post-quantum cryptography. And for most people, that'll be totally sufficient. If I buy a lipstick on Amazon, does the transaction really need to be encoded with a quantum key? Probably not. So it's clearly a niche application that I'm not sure is worth it, even for big financial transactions. What about governmental data or confidential military information? Well, the US National Security Agency has explicitly advised its government against it. They write, NSA does not support the usage of quantum key distribution or quantum cryptography to protect communications in national security systems. There are argument is simple. It's expensive, unnecessary, and very susceptible to noise, which makes denial of service attacks much easier. That said, quantum key distribution is not the only thing that one can do with a quantum internet. It could also be used one day to share quantum information among quantum computers. I have strong doubts that this makes any practical sense. 
Then again, the same thing could have been said about pneumatic tube travel. And, well, yes, the world is already in the process of switching to security protocols that are safe from quantum computers. This has been called post-quantum encryption. I frequently use NordVPN to keep my internet connection safe, and they just enabled post-quantum encryption. NordVPN is an app that makes your internet connection ultra-secure. You install it on your phone or laptop and use it to create a safe connection. With NordVPN, no one can spy on your data or track your whereabouts. It comes with a threat protection that keeps you safe from malware, trackers and malicious ads. And now it also has a post-quantum encryption. All you have to do is turn it on. You know how some content is blocked for users in certain locations? locations. For example, if you're in Europe, a lot of pages in the United States have become inaccessible in recent years because they don't comply with European privacy regulations. That can get really annoying. But well, NordVPN has more than 5,000 servers all over the world. Just pick a server in the United States. Problem solved. NordVPN is a high quality product that works as advertised and I'm happy to recommend it. If you want to try it out yourself, use our our link nordvpn.com slash Sabine or the coupon code for our special offer. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.